John, how would you assess uh, uh, Jordan's overall defense? Um, oh, I thought Jordan played very well defensively uh, tonight. Uh, I thought he was active. Um, you know, even though Anusar gets uh, 27, I thought we made him work for all the shots. Uh, you know, it was 7 for 19 from the field, and I thought that was one of the keys to the basketball game tonight. Uh, Jordan also turned in a real nice game um, offensively. He has, has 10 points and 6 rebounds. That's a pretty solid evening. Vic kind of took over there for a little bit. I'm, I'm not, nothing that you haven't seen, but what, you got into a rhythm and it just kind of, you guys separated at that point, it seemed like. Yeah, we did. Uh, you know, I thought Vic did a great job uh, tonight. Uh, you know, we moved him off the ball there for a period. We made our run a little bit. Our guys did a great job finding him. We did a good job executing our offense, and he did a nice job uh, in knocking down shots. Uh, you know, uh, Vic's obviously in a position change here, and we're asking him to do a lot of things, but but I thought he stayed the course uh, all night long and, and it did a great job, you know, just staying in it, not getting frustrated, uh, just, just playing as hard as he can. I thought B.J. Blake came off the bench and gave us great uh, energy tonight. Uh, it was nice to see him get back to rebound his ball, especially offensively. I think going into this game, he had four offensive rebounds in our five, five games that he had played in, and tonight he gets four offensive rebounds, and I thought that was a big key uh, to our victory tonight. 23 of the points for Vic were in the second half, and he's kind of off the ball. He's like, he has some able to whip down the stretch a little bit more. Uh, you know, I'm gonna go how well, how I feel. Um, you know, it, it, some of them were more when he was guarding, uh, when he went, when he was on the ball. I thought he got a little tired there, so I moved him off the ball, played Trayvon a little bit. I thought Trayvon uh, came in and did a nice job running our offense, getting the ball to the right people. Coach, you guys outscored him uh, 36 to 16 in the paint. Just how big was that battle down low for you guys? Tonight? It was it was big. It was one of our emphasis uh, against them going into this game. And I thought when we got the ball down there, we were very effective. I thought Art made some nice moves. I thought BJ was very effective down there. Uh, what did Nate do tonight? Nate was four for eight, eight, eight points, eight rebounds. So uh, uh, I thought we were very effective down around the basket, and we need to be. You guys score very slow, I think 12 points at the seven minute mark, but then scoring 51 in the second half, ending up with 79. Is this, is this kind of how you like to see the offense run with when it, when it kind of gets clicking like this? Yeah, in the second half, no no question, not in the first half. I'm, I'm, in the first half, I didn't think we executed poorly. It'll be under, interesting to watch the tape. I thought we missed a lot of uh, makeable shots. I mean, we, we start off by missing a dunk. Uh, um, and, and I thought our guys did a good job of not hanging their heads and, and staying in it. And then in the second half, I thought our ball moved well and we were able to score our ball pretty easily on You guys now 500 of the conference kind of riding the ship a little. You feel like the team's going to get a little confidence, a little under, um, under the feet a little bit more? Yeah, Josh, we're getting a little bit better. Uh, you, know, you know, the key thing uh, for this team is, is defensively. Uh, we didn't defend it well uh, the first uh, three games of conference play. That's in the first four games. You throw Weber in there. Um, you know, when this team is built to defend and rebound. And, you know, that's what I was really proud of our guys. We were tied with them on the boards at half. I challenged them at halftime, and they stepped up and out rebounded by 14 uh, in the second half. And that's a heck of a job, but that's the kind of effort we need. Uh, we need to both defend it and rebound it at a high level. At the best in this league, if we're going to compete for a league title, and we've shown that the last two games, but now we got to sustain that. Uh, Coach, you guys are in the midst of a uh, kind of a four-game stretch against the bottom teams in the Big Sky. Obviously, you guys don't take any game lightly, but do you think that this stretch is coming at an opportune time for you guys? You know, I, I, you know, you can look at it from a number of different ways, but we expect to be at the top of the league, so we really don't care who we play. We know every game is going to be a battle. Um, you know, there's no easy games in this conference, no easy games in any conference. But this conference is is is, is close. I mean, um, you know, people are knocking people off. Weber lost tonight. Montana lost tonight. Uh, it's going to be a battle every night out, and you got to work like crazy to take care of your home court, uh, which we did tonight. But um, you know, I really don't care who we play as long as we do the things that we we need to do to get it done. Did you have an explanation for Trayvon's team? Did you have an explanation? They said he, not, not really, um, they said it was after the, after the whistle that he extended his arm. Um, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm anxious to watch that one on tape because it looked like to me, and now he's right in front of me, I was blocked him a little bit, it looked like the guy grabbed him, uh, grabbed his arm or bumped into him and it was kind of just a natural reaction. Uh, Tr Trayvon didn't do that intentional. That, that was my um, explanation as well, but he didn't do it intentionally, you know, it was, it was kind of just a reflex. So. But that was the because it was after the whistle they they called it a dead ball technical. 
with uh, with Randy, their big score. You know, he likes to get to the foul line a lot. And he likes to shoot all, shoot a lot. What, what what's the what do you kind of have to do defensively against a guy like that? He's hard because he's a volume shooter. Um, you know, he's not shooting a great percentage. But uh, I think going into this uh, going into this game, he was averaging 21 shots a game. Um, you know, and he gets 19 tonight. So he's hard to guard. Um, you know, it, it, how can we have guarded him better this game? I, I thought we allowed him, we, we fouled him too much, but we, I thought we also, you know, BJ took a big charge on him. I, I thought we worked extremely hard on him. But, but what you got to do on a guy like that to answer your question is, is you, you got to sustain your effort and not give him easy shots. I thought we did a pretty good job of that. We, we lost him a couple times early. You know, his, his percentage from three, is, it was too high. But, but I thought all in all, we worked pretty hard on him. And we did a good job holding him to, a, you know, a little bit of a lower percentage. He's, he's another one, another good guard in this league. Yeah. Anything else? Thanks, guys. Uh, Vicky, can you first talk about Jordan's defense on, on, uh, on Randy and just holding them to the whole team to 32% shooting? Uh, I mean, all practice, all week, you know, we told J.O. we're going to put him on the best player. And he told him his tendencies. And, the scouting report and J.O. took it all in and he focused in and he know he knew that um, we had his back if he got beat and he had it all night. He made it hard. I mean, he shot seven for, what, 19 or something? And so, you know, that's what it takes for us to win. You know, somebody taking the challenge and being able to stop the other team's best player and neutralize them and, you know, that's how we get a win. Uh, Jordan, uh, obviously you got no Vic can score, but we like watching score 33, especially a bunch of those in the second half. And you're well, that's just another day for Vic. Like, I have to guard him every week and every day for a year, and it's fun to watch it, watch him do it to other people. So it's it's just another day for us, but it is something spectacular. Mm -hmm. And for either of you, it's uh, nice to be at 500 in conference after kind of a shaky start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean it is good. You know we didn't start off so well, but we're fighting back, and you know the only thing that matters is when everybody's in Reno. But right now, you know, we're going to grind it out and do the dirty work. And if we happen to, you know, go below 500, we're not going to quit. We're going to keep going and push till we're positive, you know, above 500. We're not happy where we are right now, though. No. Let's get that straight at all. You know, we know we should be higher up. But, you know, it's life. You take it as it comes, and we're just going to keep doing what we do and get better. Did it feel like you had to, it took a while to kind of shake, shake them off, shake a slow start, and then they kind of hung around, and you were able to kind of score some points in a row, but what, what, what did it kind of take to get to kind of, kind of find the shake then? Uh, my teammates and coaches, you know, they first half didn't go so well for me. You know, I kind of kept uh, put my head down, and, you know, all my teammates kept up, came up to me, hey, Vic, keep your head up, coaches, mm -hmm. you know, next play, and I just listened to them instead of being selfish and staying in my own world, you know, and they uh, just told me to keep shooting and keep being aggressive, and that's what I did, and the shot started to fall, and that's always good. When you get into that kind of zone, is it just what's it like driving, driving, kind of just taking the ball, looking to score? I mean, obviously, I know you're you're playing through your team, but is it just a, is it, it's, I mean, it's just opportunities. You know, I take the opportunity as it comes. If there's an opportunity for me to score and it's you know a good team shot, then I'll do that. But if it's not for me to score and it's to pass to a teammate or to um, you know get other players involved, that's what I'm happy doing too. You know, just take the game as it comes. There's never I never try to play just thinking, I, I got to score. No, I just let the game come to me and take the opportunities. Jordan, something that may be overlooked in this game is the fact that in the paint, you guys outscored them 36 to 16. Can you talk about you know, what was going well for you guys on defense in that area and then you know, kind of how much the, the offense feeds off that and Vic, you too, when you're having a, a good game from your big guys down low, how that helps uh, you have scoring opportunities on the perimeter? Well, our offense definitely feeds off our defense. Um, we, we work on our defense every day, we grind it out. Um, it's the key to our team's success. So when we're holding teams to whatever number you said, inside the paint, low number, we're doing what we're supposed to do. And that, that feeds our offense and it feeds our team in general. It brings us energy, that's how we get going. And I, I think, you know, going back to that, you know, our game plan was to, you know, attack them inside because we feel like we had the mismatch. And I think our big men did a very good job sealing running the floor hard, and our guards was able to get it to them, and they were able to finish inside. Shout out to our bigs. 
Uh, Vicky obviously had uh, the game high, but did you feel like you just mentioned your bigs kind of had the timely buckets that you guys needed? Or yeah, yeah, you know, like like, like I said, you know, they ran to the paint and sealed hard when they, and they got and ones. I mean, JL got one, um, uh, Art got one late in the game, and you know that's what it's all about making big plays when we need them, and it can come from anybody. That's the beauty of a team, you know. It does. You don't know who it's going to come from, and when our bigs step up and make their free throws and make their inside buckets, it, it helps us a lot. It takes the pressure off the guards. Jordan, what's the what was the key against going against a volu high volume shooter like Randy and knowing I mean, obviously you're a lot bigger than him, but just you know he takes a lot of shots. He also likes to draw a lot of fouls, right? I mean, yeah. So we talked about it all week. Uh, we knew he was going to shoot a lot, but our goal or my goal was to force him to take tough shots, and that means staying between him and the basket, um, make him shoot over contest. And I am taller than him, so that that helps me a lot. Hey, uh, Garden Vic, I'll help, help in practice all the time. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> he the other day he asked me um, he asked me if I was or if some other player was harder to guard than him, and the answer was no because um, he's one of the hardest guys I've had to guard in in I don't know my basketball career. So it, it's helped a lot doing that in practice, doing that in open gyms. It, it translates to games. You know, it, it, back to piggybacking on that. You know. It, we try to push each other in practice because we feel like if we go harder than it, the game, the game will come easy. You know, we push each other, we foul a lot. I mean, we do nicky knack things that get on each other's nerves. So when the game comes, we're poised and we're together because we have the same jersey on. But in practice, it's a clash. We're clashing, you know, to make each other better. And it's all that's what me and J.O. did since I got here my freshman year. You know, we've been going at it and it, it's paying off. It really is. Anything else for the guys? Don, say anything? See you about the dunk, start the game. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> 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 Let's not talk about that. <laughs>